Thank you very much. We've become one big family, I think, uh, by now. Um, you know, just, just look for a minute at the context within which the Czech presidency had to operate. Um, since the 24th of February, Putin is waging his barbaric war on a neighboring, peaceful neighboring country without any provocation. And this is a war about not just the fate of Ukraine, it's a war about the fate of Europe, about our values, about what we believe in, about the way our citizens want to live in liberty, uh, in full... Um, in full freedom, um, using their rights and to making their own choices. And in this context, which is extremely complicated, with energy prices going through the roof, with a lot of challenges uh, because of so many people seeking refuge in Europe, um, the Czech presidency was able to guide us through and to even help us take momentous decisions, incredible decisions, um, the latest being this enormous success at COP15 in Montreal, where I think Europe was again part of the deal-making side of things, um, a huge win for biodiversity, a really, really new beginning for humanity uh, to learn to live in harmony with uh, our environment, with our planet. And only days before that, um, on the actual anniversary uh, of our commemoration of uh, Václav Havel's uh, passing, the Czech presidency steered us through one of the most complicated trilogues I've ever experienced uh, on the ETS, ETS2, and Social Climate Fund decisions, which are going to be a cornerstone of Europe's efforts to decarbonize and to help us get to climate neutrality in 2050. And I think, in my experience, over the last more than 30 years, almost 35 years, working uh, with uh, the European Union and its incarnations before it was called the European Union, starting in a Europe that was still divided, I have seldom seen a presidency that has been more successful and more focused and more professional than the Czech presidency. And I want to thank you, Marianne your team, and especially also your Brussels team, for all that. I mean, very, very uh, outstanding uh, performance. Uh, I also say this because, you know, the motto of the presidency is uh, derived from what Václav Havel wrote, uh, Europe as a task, or if you want, as a duty or a mission, perhaps, uh, whatever translation of the word you want to use. And I remember him saying once, I would like to see a Europe where East and West are no longer moral qualifications, no longer political qualifications, but are, again, geographical qualifications. And I think this Czech presidency proved that East and West no longer are seen as moral or political qualifications, but purely as geographical qualifications. So, Exactly 10 years after his death, uh, Václav Havel got what he wished for in terms of the political positioning of the country he represented so well as in the heart of Europe, uh, moving Europe forward and showing full solidarity also with the Ukrainian people. Today we discuss some of the issues in the Council that are pertinent to bringing Europe um, on a more climate neutral path, on a path of uh, environmental sustainability. Um, I listened very carefully to uh, what ministers had to say on the packages we've presented and uh, there's still a lot of work for us ahead, uh, now heading to the Swedish presidency. Um, but I am absolutely convinced that if we look back over time to this presidency, we will still be amazed at everything that was achieved. Of course, uh, before the French presidency and the Slovene and the Portuguese presidency set the scene very well, but you know, um, you can set the scene as well as you wish. If you don't have, uh, you know, a top scorer uh, heading you uh, in front, you will never score a goal. Uh, and this is what you did, uh, many goals. So uh, again, a uh, big, big thank you uh, to uh, the Czech Republic for this. You have really helped Europe and Europe will be grateful. Thank you.